our Lenten series. We follow the order of Vespers tonight, page 229 in our hymnal. We continue and we celebrate the Annunciation of our Lord on this day. O oh Lord, open my hips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. stripped him of the robe 
and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads, and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Lead me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my Protect me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise up against me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text comes from the Old Testament lesson in Matthew 27. The people of old cried out, O oh Lord, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Oh, if you would just rend the heavens, if you would just break open the heavens and Come down. Come down, Lord, and save us. That's what we want. That's what we wish. We wish God could just come down and take away this coronavirus. We wish God could just come down and take away all our suffering and pain, all of our troubles. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. That's what we want, is God to come down in all his power and might and glory. But on this day, we see that this is not always how our Lord and our God acts. It's not the way he works. Today, we remember the Annunciation of our Lord. Later in the service, we will hear the, the words of Mary as she gave thanks when the angel Gabriel announced to her that she would bear a son. This would be the Son of God. In her womb, Jesus was made man. God was made man. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This happened before Christmas. This happened before Jesus was born. He was in the womb of his mother Mary for nine months, forty weeks or so. The Word was made flesh and the Word dwelt among us. God did come down from heaven. Like Isaiah cries out, like the people cried out, God did in fact indeed come down from heaven. But he didn't do it in the way we would expect. He didn't do it with all his power, glory, and might. When he comes again, he will come with his angels. He will come with the trumpet sound. But when God first 
came down, when he came down as Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. God came down as a tiny embryo, a fertilized egg, a few cells, when the Holy Spirit came upon Mary. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her. The glory from on high, the, the words of the angels spoke, and the word of God was made flesh. God became man. It may seem strange that in the middle of Lent we have Annunciation Day, March 25th, and sometimes March 25th can fall on Good Friday or even Easter, so that the very day that Jesus was conceived is the day that he died, or the day that he rose. And that's what Jesus came down to do. That's why God came down from heaven. He didn't come to make the mountains quake at his presence. He didn't come down from heaven in order to impress the people with the wonders of his might and majesty. Jesus came down humbly. He came so that he could go to the cross. When Jesus was there hanging on the cross, the people cried out. They mocked him, saying, Oh, that you would come down if you are the Son of God. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. But Jesus was made man. He was born and he lived and he was there to die on the cross. This is why Jesus has come down from heaven. He came down from heaven, but he did not come down from the cross. Not by his own power, not by his own will or might. When Jesus came down from the cross, it was when they removed his dead body from the cross. Jesus had given it all, given his life for us, for our salvation. But as Jesus was hanging there, they cried out. They wanted him to call upon the angels and, and show his glory. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. We're nailed up there, but if you're God, you can break those nails. You can break forth and come down yourself. And if Jesus, the, the irony here is that if Jesus would have come down the people would have believed if Jesus would come down right now and we could see him face to face in all his glory, we would believe. Ironically, we would believe that Jesus came down. And we often challenge Jesus to come down. We want him right here, right now to, to, to just fix everything. Bring our society back to the way it was to, to take away this virus to take away everything that troubles us. We don't want to see Jesus on the cross. We don't want to, to see the, the lifeless body of our Savior hanging there. We want to see Him in His glory. We want to just think of the resurrected Christ and forget that He in fact died and His Resurrection would be nothing if he had not died first. 
We want Jesus to come down and prove himself to us. We want Jesus to show that he is God. We want Jesus to come down right now. But what would we believe if Jesus came down? Would we have true faith? Would we believe in him as the Son of God? Or just a worker of wonders? See, the, the temptation the people were bringing to Jesus as he hung on the cross, if you are the Son of God, that's the same temptation that the devil brought to Jesus when he was tempted in the desert after his baptism. If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus doesn't give in to the devil's temptation. He doesn't use his power for what he did not come to do. He doesn't come down from the cross to, to show, to prove. He doesn't need to prove anything to those people right there who are mocking him, who are deriding him. All Jesus has to do is die for us. All he has to do, that's all he has to do. Take all of the sins of the whole world upon himself, and that's what he's doing on the cross. Bearing our sin, being our Savior. We might believe in Jesus if he came down right now, if he fixed everything. The people that were mocking him might have believed if he would have come down from the cross right then and there, but they wouldn't believe in him as their Savior. And we could not believe in him as our Savior because he had to die. He had to hang there. He had to not come down. So the irony here in Jesus' passion, the irony we look at today is that, yes, if he would have come down from the cross, we would believe in him. The people there would have believed in him, but what he would be is something, someone who's not worth believing in. It's only by his refusal, only by the fact that he did not come down from the cross, that he is our Savior. If he had come down from the cross, he would not be our Savior. But since he stayed on the cross and did not come down, he took our sins, he bore our sins. He carried them unto death. He suffered and he died according to God's plan, according to what his father, the cup his father gave him. He took that, that cup of wrath, the punishment for our sin, and Jesus reveals himself to us. He shows that he is the Son of God, our Savior, leads us in his way. He leads us into the way everlasting. Yes, the Son of God came down from heaven. He was made man. The Word became flesh. God became man. Then he lived. He was born. He lived that perfect life went to the cross, the cross that he did not come down from, but finished the work he had come to do. He finished our salvation there upon the cross. And he died, and he rose, and he lives to give us life forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the loneliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things to me, 
and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Bring healing to those who are sick, particularly those who are suffering from COVID-19. Work through the doctors and technicians, nurses, and all the staff who are caring for them and working to bring about a cure to this disease. Bring help and aid, hope and comfort to those who are suffering financially during this difficult time in our world. Guide our leaders, protect those who protect us. All this we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all.